בעזרת השם, תורה מ"ד, רבנו יסיינג, פירוש אחר, תפילות כנגד. Prayers are against. What it means against? היינו המחשבות זרות שהן כנגד. Means the foreign thoughts that are coming against. שהן מבלבלים תפילתו. That they're confusing the prayers of the person. ונקראים מבול. And their name is a flood. We're calling them a flood. Because they're flooding our mind off. הקדוש ברוך הוא is sending troops and units of those foreign thoughts to come and to disturb us from the Avodat Hashem. And you can't understand, I'm trying to pray and thoughts are killing your prayer and you want to learn Torah and suddenly every single detail in the creation of Hashem Yitbarach is jumping into your eyesight to disturb you from learning Torah. And it's coming like a flood. And they're confusing your prayer. And Rabbeinu is saying, And the way to fix it, That you're going to give charity to the Holy Land. That's the only way. The only way. You need to understand that concept of tzedakah. People don't like to hear about money. I understand. You have ta'avat mamon. You don't want to hear about it. What can I do? You don't want to learn. It's likutem waran. Okay, we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> ועל ידי זה, and by that, that you're going to give charity to Eretz Israel, it doesn't mean the IDF. It doesn't mean the, to heal uh, people with cancer. It's not to, to, to animal to live. Charity to Eretz Israel, it means spiritual charity. It's, if on the charity box it's written, Tzidkat Rabbi Meir Baal Anes, it doesn't mean Tzidkat Eretz Israel. But you don't want to talk about it, so we're going to go to the next subject. It's okay. And by that he's including himself in Eretz Israel. What is Eretz Israel? What is Eretz Israel? Eretz Israel is a thing that no one ever heard about until HaKadosh Baruch Hu decided to take Avraham Avinu and take him into the unknown. That's Eretz Israel. Eretz Israel it's the unknown. Eretz Israel it's not a state on the globe. Eretz Israel it's a spiritual place. Eretz Israel is beyond the place. Eretz Israel is the promise of Hashem Yidbarach to Avraham Avinu. The borders of 48 or 67, that's not Eretz Israel. Eretz Israel, it's the promise. You can have the borders of 48 and not to have anything inside it, to have hell inside of it, to have enemies inside of it, to have thieves, people are trying to steal your money, your wealth, your happiness, your joy, to take your children off the derech, off the holy way of Kedusha. So that's not Eretz Israel. Eretz Israel, the word Eretz means the will, Ertze, I'm going to want, Eretz, Ertze, I'm going to want, the will of all will to want, Yisrael, Yashar Kel, straight to Hashem. That I'm going to want Hashem Yitbarach and not have no one interfere, not even the Torah, not even the righteous people, just that my will is going to be like a flame of fire, straight to Hashem Yitbarach, like that it's written on Moshe Rabbeinu, Vayikod Arza, Vayikod, what, what it means Vayikod, that he was fl a flame of fire, Arza, to want Hashem, Eretz Hashem, Arza, Eretz Hashem, to want Hashem, he was a torch of fire, flame of fire, to want Hashem, that's Vayikod Arza, that was his will to Eretz Israel. The will to Eretz Israel need to be a will that you drop all of your imagination and you couldn't care less about anything else except of where is Hashem? Now, but I need to go through so many difficulties. Yes, but who cares? But where is Hashem? Yeah, but I need to learn the Mishnayot. All of them say all of the Gemara. Okay, but it's not it's not an obstacle for me. It's not, it won't be hard. Because I love it so much. Seven years Yaakov Avinu is working day and night in the winter, in the summer. <coughs> labor. He's not resting. He's not eating. And it all seems to him like few days. Why? Because he loves Rachel so much. Because he's doing it for Rachel. So because of his holy desire to be with Rachel, to build a house with Rachel, to have the 12 tribes from his wives and, 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 and to make it happen. So it seems to him like few days. There was a huge Admor that went with his father. His father was the Admor in, in that day and in those days. And the, the, there was a decree on, on his father, on the Admor, that, that he will go to, um, to, to Sibir, to, to Russia, to work labor, Avodat Kviya, Siberia. And, and, and his father was very old. 
and they made the decree on him that he must go. So his son, that in the future become to be the Admor, inherit the, the, the crown of Admorut after his father, he said, I want to join my father. They told him, all right, great, there's a place for you in Siberia, no problem, you're welcome. All aboard, and they took him with his father to Siberia. He volunteered to walk and to help his father that was old. And after six years or eight years, something like that, they came back and they asked him, how was it? And he said, it was the best time <coughs> of my life. They asked him, how can it be? What were you doing over there? They said, we were working, labor, suffering, cold, winter, frozen, uh, minus 30 uh, degrees, crazy labor. 16, 20, uh, to 18 hours a day, crazy, but it was the best time of his life. They asked him why, he said, because I could spend time with my father. He was with his father over there, so he, he couldn't care about it. No, okay, so we're working, but at least I'm with my father. And he didn't care about the cold and the suffering and the hours and the food, he was with his father over there. When your heart is aimed to Hashem, it barach, Eretz Israel can be hard, can be hot, they can have money, can have without money. If you're with Hashem, it barach, so you don't care. The troubles are coming when you forget Hashem. This is why we always need to work on our faith, to remind ourselves always. This is why we have to have it but do to talk to ourselves always. It's not money, it's Hashem. It's not my wife, it's Hashem. It's not my business, it's Hashem. It's not my friends, it's Hashem. It's not my children, it's Hashem. It's not my boss, it's Hashem. It's not my stomach, it's Hashem. It's not my health, it's Hashem. It's not my age, it's Hashem. Moshe Rabbeinu was 120 years old and he had all of his organs functioning perfectly. His eyes were working, his ears were working, his mouth, his hair, back didn't hurt. He was strong, he was powerful, he was... Why? Because Hashem was healing him, Hashem was giving him health. If now Hashem took your health, it's Hashem took your health now. You're not sick. It's not a germ. It's not a virus. It's Hashem. Hashem is playing with your mind. Hashem is confusing you. You have foreign thoughts. It's not foreign thoughts. It's Hashem. So now you lose your mind, you want to fight with Hashem, you want to argue with Hashem. Okay, I see that. Go talk about it with Hashem. If we're going to let those difficulty, uh, difficulties and all of those the, 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 uh, uh, constrictions distract our thoughts from the faith, we're going to lose Hashem. Because it's like, it's like a, 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 a game in the computer a Game Boy or something that when you, you play, so after you finish a certain level, it brings you to the higher level. So actually, as much as you grow and succeed, actually it, it, it risks you and, and you lose your point and, and you fight with enemies that are stronger than the enemies in the last level. So every time you achieve something, you say, okay, thank God, I made it, boom, suddenly you're dead, you're on the ground already, and you need to, 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 gather yourself back, back together, whoa, whoa, my hand, okay, that's my, my jaw, okay, and then, you, <laughs> let's, let's talk about it, and, and, the, and this is why you need every time, if you want to, to serve Hashem, you need to be ready for that, it's a war, and it will never gonna finish, it's milchemet ha-yetzer, it's a war against the yetzer ara. And he's evil and he's using all games and all, all shtikim, all of the tricks, everything that he can do against you, he's going to do. And Hashem gives him the permission to do that. Now you have a problem, you have a problem with Hashem. Go talk to Hashem about it. Hashem, I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my, my, my health. I'm losing, I'm, 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 I'm losing my mind. I'm, I'm losing it, Hashem. That's the only way to heal yourself, to bring the situations back to Hashem. Back to Hashem. Every day. If you try to deal and to fight and to be wiser and to learn about this subject, and know oh, I'm going to solve that, I'm going to build it. Yeah, Hashem is throwing the flood. It's water. They're going to find a way in. You cannot stop water from coming in when there's a flood. You're done. And Hashem is telling you it's a flood. That's it. It's a flood of thoughts, of foreign thoughts. You're going to say, okay, I have to solve this situation with the wife. Okay, you think that that's where your problem's going to finish? Hashem going to bring you problems from the back. Suddenly your lawyer going to call you and that's it. Your wife, she's not in the picture anymore. It's, it's you in prison. It's you in the government now. Okay, so what are you going to do next? Because if Hashem Barach is with you, so now you can talk to Hashem. 
But if you talk in front of, no, it's my wife. I need to talk to her about, it's not your wife. When I have issues with my wife, I'm going to do tshuva. I'm, not a, I'm going to pray for my wife. I'm not going to solve my issues with my wife. You can never solve your issues with your wife. When I have issues with, with my confidence in panasa, in money, I'm not going to talk about money with an Hashem, we need more money. I never say those stupid words in my Buddha. Never, ever. No, Hashem, I need my wife to wake up earlier in the morning. No, Hashem, I need my wife to help me with the kids. No, Hashem, I need $100,000. You think I made Bodhidiyot are so stupid? I will never going to talk like that to Hashem Barach. You think that Hashem Barach he doesn't know what you need? If you lack of $100,000, if you have issues with the mornings, if you have issues with your bank, if you have issues with your children, don't have school, every situation that you deal with in life, you think Hashem is not in the picture? When you go and talk, you need to talk about your side of the picture, not about Hashem's side in the picture. Go do tshuva, go tell Hashem, Hashem, I lost my confidence. Hashem, I don't have an advice. Hashem, clarify for me. What's the path? What's the way? What should I do? What do you expect me to do, Hashem? What is my job? What's the situation with me? What I should do here in this situation? Not what my wife should do, what the, 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 the bank balance should be. What should happen with me? What I should do? You're trying to wake up me. I'm asleep. So let me wake up. Let me see what you're talking about with the bank, with the people, with the, with the, with the, with the, the, the distribution. With the, what do you want from me? What can I do for you? All of the issue always is what can I do? How can I contribute? How can I help? How can I give a hand? What should I do? In which situation I should should risk myself and, and, and to be ready to sacrifice myself. And who am I in all of those situations? What do you want from me? If you pray for your wife, no, what are you going to pray for your wife? If you pray for her, Hashem, make her happy. Great, it's a wonderful prayer. But if you're going to pray for her, Hashem, please make her wake up earlier in the morning. So you're not praying for her. You can care less about her. You care about yourself. You need help in the morning, so you whine on your wife's issues in the morning. You know why she's not waking up early? Because she's depressed to see who she's waking up close to. When she sees you in front of her eyes in the morning, she rather to close her eyes and to go back to sleep. That's her problem. The problem is that when she hears your children, when she realizes that now it's another hell, hell of a day, so she don't want to wake up to a day like that. So that's your problem. It's not your wife's fault. It's the house. It's you. Of course, if you take responsibility. Means if you follow me. If you want to be my student. But if you're not. So there are a lot of rabbis. They can take you straight to hell. ASAP. No problem. Faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> straight to hell you just committed yourself to them and you're in hell that's it you just whoosh, swiped your visa that's it so that's the free choice that you have in life if to commit yourself to the truth the truth is obligating you and only you you want to work on the truth you want to connect yourself to Hashem you need to be a man of truth. My wife yesterday night, she told me, you are a liar. You think you're special? You're not special. You think you have something in you? There is nothing in you. You're empty. You're a liar. You're lying to yourself. You're lying to your students. You're lying to Hashem. You think that you're a man of truth, but I know you. I'm telling you, you're a liar. That was the beginning of our conversation. <laughs> That's how it started. So, first of all, breathe. Breathe. Like you tell your students, you tell them breathe. So now it's your time to breathe. If you teach, so you need to be ready to learn. Great. So now it's your class. Deal. Don't justify. No, but I am working on my truth. But I am seeking for the truth. How can you tell me? You're telling me. You can tell me. Now you're going to tell me. It will never going to bring you to the truth. You want the truth? So listen. Maybe you're lying to yourself. Maybe there are things that you still know. Now you're going to be insulted. 
Now you're going to be hurt. Now you're vulnerable. Now you're tired. Now you don't want to take it. Great. If you will take it, it's going to give you gifts that you will never going to be able to buy and achieve in nowhere else. Because the Torah is telling us there are 48 ways. Numeral value of 48 is moach, it's brain. There is a way, moach, use your brain. There is a way to buy the Torah. You need for, to follow 48 advice, 48 ways, and then you're going to have the moach, you're going to have the ability to understand the will of Hashem, the message from Hashem, the Torah Kedosha. One of them is Ehovet HaTochecha. You should love the rebuke. Yeah, we hate it, I know. It's hard, yeah, I know. It's embarrassing, yes, I know. It's insulting, yes, I know. I'm going through the same hell as you. But when you're going to understand that you need to love the rebuke and you're going to start working on it and you're going to find yourself loving that rebuker that is insulting you and hurting you and you're not going to be ashamed and you're not going to be insulted, just you're going to put your effort on loving that rebuke and finding the wisdom and getting the message and learning from the insultings and from the rebukes, then you're going to buy the Torah. And without it, you will be lack of moach. You won't have the brain. You won't have the wisdom. No matter how sophisticated you're going to think you are, no matter how many masechtot shas you finished already, no matter how many hours and hours of it, what do you think that you have? Rav Shalom said on students that were doing two hours it bodedut every day, they don't have it bodedut. What? They're going every week to do six hours it bodedut, they don't have it bodedut. When you try to force Hashem it barach in your it bodeduyot, so your it bodeduyot prayers are like the it bodeduyot of Korach. That is telling Hashem it barach Hashem, show them the truth, show them that Moshe is a liar, that I am the righteous man of this generation, come on Hashem, let's show them, show them that Moshe is a fake, that he's a faker, that he's a liar, show hours of hours of his life, thousands of hours he was wasting cursing Hashem, cursing Moshe, cursing himself. And in the end, he found himself in hell, screaming to Hashem Barach, Moshe is a met, and, uh, and the Torah is a met, and we are liars, shakranim, and we're all liars. That is the, now that's the prayer of Korach. Now that's what, what left out of Korach, from Korach. That now he's saying the truth, Moshe emet, ve Torato emet, v'anachnu badain, and we are liars. That's the truth, that he was a liar. He was a liar that was doing hours of it. There is a Midrash of Shalom read us a Midrash that says that Korach was doing six hours it bodedut every day. He was doing six hours it bodedut every day, this poor guy Korach. You can see in the Tzion of Rabbeinu Kadosh, you can see people that they have it bodedut and they have... You see people learning Likutei Moharan, you say to yourself, wow, amazing Hasidah Breslev, probably angels are walking between us. And then you see him stealing pizza from the pizza place. You see him cursing someone and spitting on a woman that is walking on her way to the Tzion. I don't know what. Disgracing the name of, screaming in the Tzion, insulting people. What are you doing? You need to say this. You have to do that. You... What happened to all of you Likutei Moharan that you were waving with a few minutes before you know Likute Moran supposed to make you humble and you close the book <sighs> I know it by heart <sighs> a contaminated heart a leprosy heart that's not a heart it's a snake a snake that knows the Likute Moran you have snakes that know Likute Moran you have amazing snakes that knows the shas by heart you have amazing snakes you think that the snake that was taking Adam Arishon and convincing him to sin was a stupid snake? No, he was very wise. He was very intelligent. He was huge. He was a genius, this snake. He knew all of the Torah by heart. He knew all, because he was fighting with Adam Arishon. Adam Arishon was a genius. Adam Arishon was a creation of Hashem Barach. He was pure. And the snake was smarter than him. So he broke him to pieces, the snake. So the snake was the hugest Talmid Chacham of that generation. He was huge. 
He was the chief rabbi of heaven. But he was a snake. And you have thousands of snakes like those today in this generation. They have snakes' belts, and they have snakes' shoes, and sneakers. They have bow ties, they have long beards, and peot, and everything. Cowboys. Snake boys. Pathetic, pathetic. Reality is pathetic. But we have our responsibility. We need to fight against the system. What can we do? If we're going to follow the rules, if we're going to obey, we're going to become to be snakes. I'm not into it. Sorry, I'm apologizing. It's not our plan. It's not an option. The snake, he's got a tongue that is cut to two. He's ready to tell you whatever you need to hear. Oh, I love you. No, I hate you. No, yes, I love you. No, I hate him. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, always. Yes, whatever you need to hear, he will tell you to take your credit card in the end. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, you need tikkun nefesh, tikkun neshamot. No problem. What do you need? Oh, lilu nishmat your father? No problem. We're with you. I love you. Yeah, I'm going to take care of you. Don't worry. I promise to you, you're going to live forever. Yeah, I'm going to teach you all of the Torah. No problem. I'm going to take care of your children. I'm going to give you Shalom Bayit. <laughs> I'd rather to smoke drugs in Compton than to hang out with those rabbis. <laughs> Are you coming with me, JJ? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not on that one. Okay, we have him 98%. We're going to work on the other two. If I'm going to Compton, you need to come with me to Compton. I'm going to give you a shalom bite. <laughs> I'm going to take care of your children. A person that is lying to Hashem in Barach cannot stand in front of Hashem in Barach. It's not. In Judgment Day, it's the most terrifying day of them all. In that day, all of the cards are going to be open. You're going to stand naked, barefoot, with all of your foreign thoughts, with all of your desires, with all of your faults, with all of your lies, with all of your scams. Everything going to be open. Who were you in that situation? Who were you in that moment? Who you were? Who you were in that time? What were you thinking to yourself? What were you doing with yourself? What were you thinking to yourself? What was your plans? Were you doing those things because you wanted or because you were afraid? Were you doing those things because you really cared about Hashem? Or you were just pretending to be a slave of Hashem, someone that serves Hashem? Who were you, Be'emet? Truly, tell the truth. Say the truth. Who were you? That's what Hashem Barach is expecting us to be. People of truth. Anshe Emet. People of truth. Say to Hashem Barach, I'm the worst one of them all. I'm going down the drain. I'm zero. I'm nothing. I'm zero. I'm a liar. I'm a pathetic liar. That's the truth. And then you're going to be healed. Now we can start to help you. <laughs> now we're going to help you. You need to have that point of truth. To be ready. To admit on the worst lackings of them all. To say, yes, I'm lazy. Yes, I'm sending my children to learn Torah because I don't want to hear about them anymore. Yes, Hashem Barach, I'm going to learn Gemara because I can't stand being in my house. Yes, Hashem Barach, I'm even ready to go and to confess and do tshuva. Just please leave me alone. Just stop harassing me. Please leave me alone. Say the truth. I'm serving Hashem because I'm afraid to be punished. I'm serving Hashem because it seems to be like the best thing. I don't know. I haven't really thought about it all of the way. What's the real way? When you're going to say those words of truth, Hashem will have the ability to come and to be there with you, to illuminate, to shine, to talk to you, to show you more things 
The truth is the window. The truth is the opening. It's the door. Now you said the truth, Hashem can come. Because Hashem Elokechem emet. Because your God is God of truth. And when you're lying, Hashem is not there, no matter which lie. No, I want to learn Torah, I want to learn Gemara, I want to be tzaddik, I want to be righteous. I want to honor my wife, but she's making me crazy. It's a lie. If you want to honor, so you need to honor, honor. So what if she's disgracing you? Honor her. What you said, I want to honor, right? So honor. No, you want honor. This is why you cannot honor, because you want honor. And when she's disgracing you, so you cannot honor her back. So you just reveal that the purpose is to receive honor and not to give honor. Because you can honor the devil. What's the problem? Honor. If you need to honor, so honor. If your purpose is to honor your wife, so honor your wife. But you want her to honor you back. So you just lied when you said you want to honor her. You want to honor her if she's going to honor you back. So the real purpose is that she's going to honor you. So actually you're ready even to honor her if in the end she's going to honor you. So the purpose is that you're going to receive honor. So don't say, I want to honor my wife, just she's making me angry. That's a lie. You don't want to honor your wife. You want quiet. You want to be stoned on the sofa and no one's going to talk to you about anything else except of, thank you, master. We love you, Master. Your food is ready, Master. Yes, your slippers are here, Master. Can I do anything else for you, Master? Oh, I enjoy your snorings in the middle of the night, Master. Thank you for snoring so loud, Master. That's what you want. <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> okay, I love you, but slakarava. <laughs> <laughs>